Hello everybody, welcome to my bottle rocket workshop. I'm Dave Eagle and I run the Stargazing Mobile Planetarium. I love nothing better to go into schools, making kids really enthusiastic about astronomy and space fly and teaching them loads of physics in a real fun way. So the bottle rocket workshop is what you think it might be. It's where we make rockets out of bottles. When I go into schools, we get the children to make bottle rockets. And here's a few in action. You can see we get them to do really nice designs. We then take them out into the playground or the uh, field and put them on a launcher and then launch them. So it's not just making a rocket, we actually launch a rocket as well. And it's really great fun. The kids absolutely love it. So do I. So please use this uh, video and the associated worksheets that will be on the website and download them and use them to either support what I've done in the school or as a standalone activity for a space week in your school. So what do we do? Well, we take a bottle. It has to be a fizzy pop bottle. It has to be one that's carbon dioxide pressure uh, because we use pressure to actually make the bottle into a rocket and we just turn it upside down here it is it's upside down but it's not a very good rocket at that point because we need to do things to it they don't call it rocket science for nothing as you can see the bottle has got a flat top it's blunt so when it goes through the air it's pushing against the air pushing it out of the way so it's not very efficient it uses too much energy it doesn't cut through the air very well at all so the key word here is that it's not very aerodynamic so it doesn't travel through the air very efficiently and uses too much fuel we can solve this by adding something to the top of the bottle here it is it's a shape you're probably very familiar with a cone there it is and we can add one of those to the top of the bottle and that makes a nose cone and if we stick that on the top of the bottle there, that now gives it a pointed top, which will cut through the air really, really well, produces less drag and makes the bottle more aerodynamic. So it uses less fuel to go through the air, makes it more efficient. So that's what we want to do. But there's still some other things we need to add to the rocket as well. A rocket like this isn't very stable moving through the Earth's atmosphere. So we need to add a couple of things to it, or at least two things to it. And these are called fins, They're much like fish, but uh, they don't move. So out of card, we normally cut two triangles and add them to the bottle. You could do two, you could do three, or you could do four, depending on how many you'd like to make, but minimum of two, either side of the bottle, and then stick those towards the bottom of the bottle. And they produce a little bit of drag on the bottle so that the bottom stays pointing towards the ground and the top which has got less drag on it keeps forward so it would hopefully fly in a straight line it makes it more stable moving through the earth's atmosphere those fins produce that drag at the bottom make it more stable so it goes in more of a straight line but just note that any rocket that operates outside the atmosphere doesn't need fins because they won't work they've got nothing to act against so they won't work What fuel can be used? Well, most rockets you see on the uh, television launching uh, astronauts up to the International Space Station or probes out to the solar system use a chemical reaction. But we're going to use air pressure because that's a little bit safer than a reaction going on. It's a little bit more controlled because when you go into school, especially safety is always the first thing we have to take into consideration. So we have to make things as safe as we can. So we're going to use water and pump air into the bottle as well. Uh, so how does that work? Once we've made our bottle, how does that work? Well, here it is. We're going to half fill the bottle with water and you can see the air bubbling in as we pump air into the bottle. Now, in the top of the bottle, 
more air you put in there, the air pressure builds up. And you can see the arrows are starting to push against the side of the bottle. As you can see there. And the more air we add to the bottle, the greater the pressure. So you see there's more arrows indicating that there's more pressure pushing against the bottle, the sides of the bottle. But also notice there are some arrows towards the bottom. Not only is the air pressure pushing against the side of the bottle, it's also pushing against the water. So if we were to release the cap of the bottle, it would push the water out. And that's how our rocket is going to work. So we've half filled the bottle with water. We pump air into the bottle using the pump. And the air pressure in the top of that bottle is going to build up. That pressure pushes on the water. So it's ready to launch once you've got enough pressure in there to push that water out. And then if you remove the stopper of the bottle, you would release the water and the water would be pushed out of the bottom. We do that on the launch pad. And then once we release that on the launch pad, the air pressure forces out the water out the cap in a downwards direction. So it's moving down in that direction. There is Newton's third law of motion. Now that states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And Isaac Newton wrote this law over 300 years ago. And that's how our bottle works. So if we release the cap, and let the water out, it moves downwards in the downwards direction. So that means the opposite and equal reaction is in the upward direction. So the water moving downwards pushes the bottle upwards. And so if we were to do that in a controlled way, our bottle would then launch away in the opposite direction and we would launch it. But how successful is that? Well, let's have a look at one we did in the school a few months ago. Open the air in. So as you can see, it works really, really well. So when you launch a rocket, how does it fly? Or how well does it fly? How high did it get? You might want to measure how high your rocket got before it came back down to Earth. Of course, the more energy you have in there, the higher it will go. And what could have affected the height that the bottle rocket goes into the sky? There's lots of factors you could take into account. So the other thing you can measure is how far did the bottle go? So how far does it land away from the launch pad? Could that be a good measure? But there could be something else that would have affected this as well. It may not be the energy. If you look at the video that was playing a couple of slides ago, you would have heard something on there that would have caused a rocket, if it was launched, to land a lot further away. See if you can guess what that is. OK, so once you look at how your rocket flies, you can possibly look at how would you change your rocket to make it launch a little bit better next time. And that's exactly what rocket science is. Whenever they build a rocket, they have to make sure they build it correctly. They make sure it's built the right way so that it's as efficient as possible, uses less fuel and performs the job that they need. So let's have a look at our rocket and see how we could improve it. We added a nose cone to that. Is that nose cone pointed enough? For example, did you, if you made it taller and thinner, would that make it better? Would it make it go through the air much, much better? The other thing to think about when you made your rocket, was your nose cone a little bit crinkled and bent in some way? If it was, as it goes through the air, that may have an effect on the way the air passes over the rocket and makes it move in a certain direction. And that's something we want to avoid. So we need to have that as straight as possible. And then talking of straight, was the nose cone put on really straight? Of course, if a nose cone is put on pointed to one side, again, that will steer the rocket in one direction. So it won't probably go as high as we would like. It won't go as straight. So it will curve around and come back to Earth a little bit quicker than it could do. What about the fins? 
How big did you make your fins? Could they be bigger? Would they work better if they were bigger? But we said that they work by drag on the atmosphere. Would they increase the drag and drag the rocket back? Could they be smaller? If they're smaller, would this reduce the drag? But are they, do they still work as they're meant to if they are smaller? So how big are they? How heavy are the fins? And could this change the drag of the rocket as it flies through the air and hold it back? And when they're stuck onto the rocket, are they on straight? Because don't forget, if they're put on at an angle, they will steer the rocket. And so if they're not straight, it won't go in a straight line. Now, where did you put your fins? Most of the time we put our fins towards the bottom of the bottle, but you might want to play. Could you put them in a different position? Perhaps put them a little bit closer towards the nose cone. Does that still have the same effect? Does it make it better? Does it make it worse or don't they work at all? These are all things you could try to find out whether you could get the best flying rocket. You might want to look at the fuel. How much water did we use? Well, we used half a bottle. If you put more water in that bottle, would that give you more power? But think. To get the bottle launched, we need to pump air in there. And we've got half the bottle to put the air in. So if we put more water in, there's less space for the air to go in. So does that give us less air pressure? And of course, if you put more water in the bottle, that's going to make it a lot heavier. So when it launches, there's a lot more weight for it to lift before all the water comes out. So this will all have an effect on your rocket and how it flies. While you're looking at fuel, you might also want to think how many pumps are you going to do to get the air into the bottle? If you put more pumps, does that give you more power and more energy to get the rocket a little bit higher? But don't forget, the more pressure you add into the rocket, the more you could damage the bottle or the equipment that you're using to launch it. So we need to be really careful. As I said, safety first always and the more pressure we use the more dangerous it becomes so we don't want to avoid that as much as possible well done for doing some real rocket science because that's what it's about not all the rockets when they first built them worked properly and they had to do all these sorts of things to make sure they got a rocket that flew properly as you can see there's lots of ways that we could improve the way our rocket flies and have a sit down and see if you can think of any more. So download the worksheets and have a go at the worksheets and see if you can learn some of the things that we've been talking about on this video. But most of all, enjoy science. Okay, so before we finish, let's have one more launch of one of our rockets in the school. So there you go, it works really, really well. So enjoy bottle rocket workshops and I hope to see you in the school very, very soon. Thank you, bye-bye.